The Global Leadership Award has sought to spotlight exceptional individuals who elevate our commercial ties, enrich our communities, and promote our mutual commitment to global progress. Ability, adaptability, foresight, and business acumen. From pharmaceuticals and contract research and development services to agriculture, performance polymers, food services, including Domino's Pizza and Popeyes, automotive, aerospace consulting, and oil field services, their impact is both broad and deep. The Bartier brothers have not only steered their conglomerate to impressive heights, but have also etched an indelible mark on the Indian industrial landscape. Their story stands as a testament to the power of visionary leadership and the unique dynamism of family-run enterprises in India. Their saga of success serves as a beacon for aspiring entrepreneurs, illuminating the path from humble beginnings to global recognition. Mr. Shyam Bhartia, with his astute financial acumen, honed through his training as a chartered accountant, has consistently steered the company through choppy economic waters with deft precision. On the other hand, Mr. Hari Bhartia, armed with a chemical engineering degree from the Indian Institute of Technology in New Delhi, has applied his profound scientific knowledge to deliver innovative solutions that have propelled the company to the forefront of numerous sectors. Together, their distinct expertise has culminated in a synergy that has propelled jubilant Bhartia Group onto the world stage. This collaboration has not only resulted in immense commercial success, but has also generated substantial societal benefits. The two brothers exemplify how business leadership can dovetail with social responsibility, making a substantial positive impact on the lives of countless individuals. As we present this award, we celebrate not just the remarkable achievements of Mr. Sham and Hari Bhartia, but also their ceaseless spirit of innovation, their unwavering commitment to ethical business practices, and their enduring dedication to fostering Indian and American business relations. Their legacy resonates far beyond the realm of business, serving as a reminder of the extraordinary things that can be achieved when vision, resilience, and a commitment to the greater good all converge. Like the United States and India, and our convergence strategically, economically, and technologically, the Bhartia brothers epitomize the true spirit of the USIBC Global Leadership Award, and it is indeed our privilege to honor them today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Mr. Sham Bhartia and Mr. Hari Bhartia, the deserving recipients of this year's USIBC Global Leadership Award. up here for the speech. Will that work? <laughs> Look at that. I'll take it. There we go. All right. Please. Ambassador Sandhu, Atul, Edward, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. It is indeed a moment of immense pride and gratification for both me and Hari at the Jubilant Bhartia Group to receive the USIBC Global Leadership Award. We are honored to accept this award. This would not have been possible without the dedication and hard work of our team 
at Jubilant and support of our families. Thank you, USIBC and Atul, for your commendable work towards building an economic and strategic partnership between India and the U.S. India and U.S. stand strong on several shared ideologies. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President Joe Biden, we have seen a strategic consolidation of this partnership. I am convinced that the upcoming visit of Prime Minister Modi will further strengthen this relationship. <clears throat> we came to U.S. almost three decades ago. The country welcomed us with open arms and offered us conducive environment to do business. We partnered with several U.S. companies and the group is committed to invest, engage and grow this partnership in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you once again. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, congratulations to Sham and Hari Bharatiya on this uh, recognition and this honor. It's uh, great to be here in conversation with both of you. Uh, I, I think, uh, as was illustrated in that audiovisual that just played out, it gives you a sense of uh, the size, the scale, and the scope of their business interests. Uh, they, of course, are a great example of what can happen when we see convergence of interests between India and the U.S. because they are the franchises for big U.S. brands like uh, Domino's, Dunkin' Donuts, and of course they do have operations here in the U.S. In fact, uh, they're committed uh, to investing about, what, $285 million here in the U.S., which I will talk to you about in just a second. And so it would be great to get a sense from them on the opportunities that lie ahead for U.S. businesses that wish to operate in India or incrementally invest further in India, but also to talk about uh, Indian businesses that are looking at opportunities here in the U.S. So once again, congratulations and thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bhartia, let me start by talking to you about uh, the India aspiration for U.S. brands, U.S. businesses who are looking at the consumption story. Uh, and you are betting on the consumption story as well across different sectors from pizzas to donuts at this point in time. Almost 2,000 stores now for Domino's pizzas in India. Uh, how confident do you feel about consumption holding up? And what is the message here to U.S. companies who are looking at the Indian consumption story? <clears throat> So with, if, I, if I look at our own experience in the last 25 years, you know, uh, when, I, when we first looked at bringing a U.S. brand to India, uh, one thing that we learned that in U.S., the brands which were very large, like McDonald's or Domino's or anyone, they have done well because they provide great product at good value. You know, if you go to any of these brands, you'll find a CEO uh, standing in queue, buying a hamburger or a pizza, and even a FedEx driver is in the same queue. So it's great product, great value for everyone. And that was what we thought we should bring it to India. And uh, so one reason of success is continuously bring value to the customer. If I look at our own journey in the last 10 years, I don't think we have, we have actually increased prices, but what we have done is continuously used leverage the scale to bring value. If you can give value, you will build scale. And today, it is the second largest in the world. When we started 25 years back, it looked quite difficult. 
but at the pace at that we are growing i think the market is probably maybe 7000 stores and in the next 20 years it will be more than 10000 stores so it will be as big as the us market because the it, the indian consumption story is not in main cities only in main large urban centers that we visit but is it is now starting to see in district headquarters in small towns consumers want great product hygienic product delivered at great value so i think the scope is unlimited for us brands who are trying to enter india but one thing to be kept in mind that indian consumers demand great product at a great value great product at a great value i want to talk about the scale ambition and uh, we just had the ambassador taranjit sandhu say that uh, uh, be uber ambitious you talked about the headroom for growth uh, what could the aspiration be what could the ambition be and are you also likely to consider bringing other brands uh, into india to service the consumption story of course we have we have recently brought in popeyes which is a fried chicken brand uh india is a large consumer of this protein as you know because chicken is the most reasonably priced protein that you can uh and india is though people believe it's a vegetarian market but india majority is a non vegetarian market only in some parts of india people do eat lot of vegetarian food so we believe this will be equally big and equally successful we have brought in brands like dunkin which is a really a coffee first brand uh we have also created some brands in india uh because after indian food uh we have chinese and then we have pizzas so you can imagine uh, uh and you know pizza pe- people believe it's an italian product but actually <laughs> americans are much bigger and uh and we believe that it is an american pizza which is more dominant and soon could be indian if yeah, if if if, if that things pan out it it's likely to be larger than the us market <laughs> absolutely we hope so we hope so as ambassador sandhu said we have to think big and i think our ambitions are that it should be the largest market in the world i think we have 1.4 billion population aspirational uh, and i and i want to bring in another aspect about food that while we we brought a great product you know which was guaranteed to be delivered in 30 minutes uh, or we said you can have it for free but what it what we also did that we brought in the lot of technologies which relates to supply chain uh, cold chain management so while you see a front end investment of stores but there was a huge amount of work done at the back end building commissaries food processing factories building a resilient supply chain and because food as you know uh, goes bad if you don't manage it right. properly so i think there was a lot of learning from these large american companies how to manage a large scale supply chain for food we built in vendors today we are the biggest buyers of cheese when we started we brought in tech technical experts to teach cheese manufacturers how to scale up and today they are huge they are not only supplying to us but supplying to other brands and also exporting globally so we feel very satisfied that we not only built a business uh, where we employ today 50000 people but we also built a large set of vendors today who are not only supplying to us but to the other companies so you've helped create an ecosystem around Absolutely. around food and food management mr shambhartia let's talk about the us ambition and the us aspiration for you because uh, i don't know how many people in the room know here but you have a sizable presence here uh, across the pharmaceutical space you are invested in the life sciences space as well in fact you're the number two manufacturer here in the us in the radio pharma uh, business as well uh, what is the level of aspiration ambition that you have for the us uh, you know what excites you about this market in specific and what have been the key learnings in being able to operate here and how do you proceed further 
think we uh, came to U.S. about 15 years back. And when we came to U.S., as I said, uh, before that, we've been coming to U.S., so we saw the opportunities in the pharmaceutical sector. So we invested about $450 million in two large manufacturing facilities, one in Salisbury, other in Spokane, two, two in Spokane. And we are present in uh, nuclear medicine, we are present in generics, we are present in allergy therapy, uh, allergy therapy. We are present in uh, sterile manufacturing. During COVID time, you know, we manufactured a lot of COVID products. We supplied to, uh, uh, we, we helped the pharmaceutical industry to, for a lot of COVID products, and in, including remdesivir, we manufactured for the first time in, in US. And we today are present in almost 20 states through our 46 radio pharmacies and serving about 1,700 hospitals. Our allergy therapy, we are serving almost 2,500 allergy practitioners. And we are also manufacturing one of the products, which is B-Venom, which is, we are the only manufacturers in the US, and through the distribution with allergy therapy, I think we saved many lives. We are saving many lives who are affected by bee allergy. And uh, we are also present in our uh, biotech venture, through biotech venture in India. We are doing clinical trials on oncology and, uh, uh, and many other diseases, unmet diseases in uh, in US. Plus also we are, you know, through our manufacturing in India, we are supply chain partners to many large U.S. agrochemical companies, pharma companies, chemical companies, etc. So our presence in U.S. and we have, we, have, we have committed to invest further about $320 million. So we are very happy with our investment. We are growing our investment and, and we feel very uh, proud to be here and participating in the pharmaceutical value chain. You know, speaking of value chains and from food to pharmaceuticals, you've covered uh, all those spaces. And we're here in the context of furthering and amplifying this partnership. I want to understand from you, Hari Bharatiya, uh, you know, whether it's defense, it's technology transfer, the expectation and the hope is that finally we will start to see the needle move on some of these issues. Where do you believe we should focus our attention? Where do you believe the partnership should deepen, uh, you know, its priorities on both sides? So, so one thing which I want to highlight is, you know, we, there's a lot of conversation around innovation. Uh, you know, U.S. is a mecca for innovation. Whatever you say, but uh, pharmaceutical industry, biotech, uh, even technology. But I think India is catching up very fast. Uh, you know, you'll be amazed to know that today there are 5,000 biotech startups. India earlier, we were, we were contract research companies, you know, we were doing contract research in India. Proprietary product development was limited 10 years back. But today, because the same, the, you know, like you have clusters here for innovation ecosystem, similar clusters you're starting to see developing in India. And, and these startups, are now, when you look at biotech, including digital, technology, artificial intelligence, because all these are being applied even in the biotech industry. So, so you, what you see is really proprietary products patented out of India. And venture capitals from US are now starting to invest. Now that is, a, in my view, the, the biggest way we could partner, uh, not really in just being a supplier, but creating intellectual property together. I think that's, a, in my view, uh, big, big scope. You know, Jubilant today does early research for proprietary products in oncology in India, and now we are bringing it here in US to do the clinical part. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, 
this will go to a large pharma who would go and market it. Mm -hmm. So I think this kind of collaboration is new, uh, is starting to happen, and I'm sure it's happening in biotech, it's going to happen in defense. There was a conversation about a yeah. lot of startups being coming here and, and sh showcasing them in space and, and defense. And I see, in, in, of course, in digital and tech, yeah. we are quite ahead. Uh, AI is starting to happen. You know, we also heard here from uh, both ambassadors suggesting that let's not be prisoners of the past, but let's talk about the future. And if there are any asks that need to be put on the table that both sides need to work on to ensure that we don't underperform our true potential, what would you like to put on the table, uh, especially, you know, when we talk about regulatory challenges, regulatory complexities, and that is a big challenge, especially for pharma, life sciences, biotech, etc. On both sides, uh, you know, one ask each. So... On the, on the pharma side, as we have discussed in the Indo-US uh, CEO's Council, uh, one of the things could be more collaboration on regulation. Uh, you know, Indian companies have set up huge capacities in India for supplying generics to US. Now, obviously, patient safety is topmost important. And now, for that, compliance and quality is is very, very critical. Now, I think uh, uh, it is important that the US FDA invests more on training people in India for building a resilient supply chain. Uh, also, Indian companies get inspected from, you know, you, uh, the Canadian authorities, European authorities, Japanese authorities, if there is a way to harmonize these kind of approvals, that if you are approved by a Japanese company or a Japanese government right. uh, or regulator, then that should apply for U.S. also. So some level of harmonization, mm -hmm. and this conversation is starting to happen. Now, if that happens, then all these capacities will get unlocked, and more and more uh, resilient supply chains can be built. I think the need for standardization and harmonization of regulation and rules is not just limited to the pharmaceutical sector, but across that. But, you know, speaking of pharma, and we've got about a minute to go, and I'll get Mr. Bhartia to comment on that. I think uh, every time you hear of a Form 483, which is what the U.S. FDA issues, you can see, you can see panic across uh, uh, in the Indian pharmaceutical sector. But, Sham Bhartia, you know, outside of pharma, life sciences, biotech, uh, the group also has interests in areas like aerospace, aviation, etc. And those are now booming opportunities with a lot of headroom for potential growth and, again, potential for partnership between both sides. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, you are right. I think we started about... Uh, if you can just hold up the mic, sir. We started about th uh, three decades ago uh, with Bell Helicopters uh, uh, from U.S., collaborated and brought the Bell Helicopters to India and now Cessna aircrafts to India. So I think there is a great opportunity for both the countries to participate in the aviation industry. As uh, I was recently told uh, uh, that there is going to be an aviation summit into India. A lot of aviation companies are coming to India and see the opportunity. And many Indian companies today are producing for U.S. and, and not for European aviation authorities. So I think U.S. companies have a great opportunity to come to India and be partnered with these companies in India, invest in India in the aviation sector. And I think there is likely to be a collaboration between G engines to well, well, the hope, the hope is hope, that we'll hear something that, on, yeah, on something that front, on the GHAL yeah. front at the end of uh, the Prime Minister's visit uh, this time around. Before I let you go, what is the quirkiest pizza topping that has been invented in India? It's, the, it's called the Peppy Paneer. It's a paneer <laughs> with red chilies. It's, and, I'm, and I encourage all of you to try it. It's outstanding. <laughs> all right. So, so get your size of the Peppy Paneer. Uh, Shab and Hari Bhartia, congratulations once again. And thank you very, very much for joining us here this morning. Thank you.